Guys, how are you doing on this wonderful Friday? I think we had a tough week or we already had two tough weeks behind us where many people lost big parts of their fiat value in their crypto portfolio. Um, yeah, are you in fear yet? Let me know in the comments. Are you fearing the big, big dip? And yeah, let me know if you sold some cryptos on the top. I didn't do anything, just that you know. Um, I'm usually going with the dips and I'm usually sitting on my crypto coins, not cashing out anything. But let me know if you already took this chance and are we going to a bear market now or is this just an insane dip that we never saw before? Let's talk about it in this episode. Hey guys, I'm Alex from Simple Crypto and I am updating you here frequently about the current situation on the crypto market as well as with secret gem videos so you can invest your money in great projects uh, that I show you here. Obviously, what I do here is not financial advice, so I do what I say or I, I'm sharing with you ideas, but you always need to do your own research. So make sure whenever you invest in something, it's on your own risk and it's not my fault. It's not, uh, I mean, you don't, you shouldn't listen to what I say. It's just um, my opinion, my personal way that I go. So if you're new to this channel, please make sure you subscribe uh, down there, I think. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you don't miss any updates here from my side. And let's check out the crypto market today. Obviously, as always, guys, I check with you the Bitcoin price first and Bitcoin is currently sitting there at $36,700. It's um, a pretty low price when we see like we dipped again from about 40 down to this level. Uh, we see that there is some support probably somewhere, but um, it's... <laughs> It's not really convincing. You know, you see, I always talk about it. I always talk about the volume. So you're seeing down there, the volume is still very low. And as long as the volume is low, there is no big um, buying coming in. And, you know, uh, when there are no big buyers, uh, it can easily dump because only some people have to sell. Little volume means that it's easy to dump as well. Um, on the other hand, if a lot of buyers come in, they can also push the market faster with little volume. It's kind of obvious. Um, what had happened, Bitcoin was actually increasing massively from end of last year already. So we saw half a year of a bull market. Um, and what actually happened is now all over Twitter. We see a pattern which is called the Wyckoff or Wyckoff pattern, which was described by Wyckoff very, very long time ago. So it's a kind of pattern where the people who accumulated early manipulate the market in a way that they can sell off a lot at a higher spot and then let the market drop again. So we see that this bull market which started end of the year actually lost momentum it lost momentum swing by swing and you see it down here when you look at the rsi the rsi was getting uh having lower highs all the time all the way you can make this line i put it there uh, all the way to today we see it's now very low and in the opinion of many people, we are getting in a new accumulation phase. So we are making something here, um, moving around in this area a bit where people will accumulate again, where the big whales who manipulate can accumulate again. So if this manipulation is the actual fact, I mean, obviously, I cannot tell you if it's really true, but it looks so insane like this pattern. You can check it out. Um, I will put it here in the screen. So the pattern is actually exactly like uh, the, the one from the 
description of Wyckoff, which is insane that it's even possible to build it this way. But it apparently works if a if big whales um, act that way. So are we now in a bear market? I don't know. This is an insane dip that we have not really seen in the history at all, except 2013, where the double bull run happened. So first it went up really, really far, and then it uh, crashed again in even sp even uh, faster than here. So it went like this, you know, and then it went up again. Uh, let's let me see if i can find it quickly for you this is 2013 and uh here you see this insane dip uh and we continued kind of in a short bear market section for quite a while until we broke up again to go to the next height so the whole bull market was it was um different than the 2017 one and obviously different than this one. And I, I think one thing we should explain here at that point is that I believe Bitcoiners are too much focused on how it was in history. Obviously. Generally speaking, I think there are some mistakes that Bitcoiners always make. Uh, in this video, maybe three of them to you. So first of all, I think that Bitcoiners always believe we can predict the future with two bull markets that we had mainly orientated on the 2017 market they think it will play out exactly the way that it did back then one more time um yeah others are drawing this chart you know it the stock to flow chart or also the rainbow chart and you know they always think it will continue that way but I think that data from two bull markets is very, very slim. It's not so much. We will definitely get a third version this time, a third bull market version, which can help us to maybe predict the fourth one even more accurate because it's going to be probably more a mixture between the former bull markets. However, this is not guaranteed. And I want to say that now very clearly. Um, even though it's likely that the bull market plays out in a similar way, it doesn't need to do. Maybe it's coming completely different. And there are several reasons why we can think that the bull market actually could change forever and not have the same patterns anymore. So second, although the stock to flow model is predicting that the bull market should be in a similar way again, there are many things that have changed. And we see institutional investors, we see a Bitcoin market, a general crypto market, which has massively matured. So this matured market, it uh, is not only uh, some nerds who invest in that. It's not only dependent on the Bitcoins produced. I mean, that's a simple logic, but in the end, um, also the momentum needs to be there. I think that Ivan on tech, for example, shout out to my YouTube colleague, Ivan, who has tons of more followers than me, obviously. Um, he pointed out that Bitcoin starts to correlate more and more with the stock market, for example. This means that Bitcoin is by growing, by attracting the, a broader audience of people, it's at the same time getting more vulnerable towards general market conditions. So if markets in general are playing well, if markets, um, if people have money, they want to invest in markets, in general, the Bitcoin will profit more than others, obviously, because we all know that Bitcoin is kind of the future. The whole crypto market will continue to grow massively. I'm also on your side there. I'm a big bull. Um, but we also see if there are bad days in general, if if uh, we see it in other markets like the stock market, um, then we know that crypto can also have a tough time because people are just not in investment mood. They are um, economic outlooks are bad, for example, and people think like, let's uh, not invest so much or the opposite. People have a lot of money to invest. They might take a big chunk of it and put it into crypto. But if they don't have the money to do so, they 
won't, right? So the bigger this market gets, the more dependent on the general uh, market situation it might get as well. And number three, uh, I talked with many friends about this in the past already, the last months, that this market is also very, very different because it's not so dependent on Bitcoin any longer. We still see the pattern that Bitcoin is increasing, the whole market is in a positive momentum and Bitcoin is dropping like the last two weeks and you see the whole market is in trouble. But we keep seeing less and less correlation between coins and Bitcoin. There are always some coins which perform through dip days of Bitcoin as well and in general we see that there are so many more trading pairs towards US dollar, for example, and other stable coins. In the last market, whole 2017, you had to go through Bitcoin or maybe Ethereum to get into crypto. You couldn't buy your small cap <laughs> shit coins or yeah, whatever coins. I mean, good coins with small caps. You couldn't buy them right away with fiat, but that's now possible. So we see in general, Bitcoin is still, it's still the number one by far and is still the, the one that everything is kind of dependent on. However, I think we come in a time where the independence of coins will be stronger and stronger in the future. So we will see Bitcoin having less influence over the whole market movement. Uh, yeah, the, the whole, you see it, the, the Bitcoin dominance, it's decreasing, it keeps decreasing and it will go to an all-time low this year. I'm pretty sure about that. And at this point, we will see coins which move independent from Bitcoin. So this was reason number three. Tell me in the comments if you have anything more you want to discuss about the Bitcoin price and of, about the future movement. Uh, this being said, I think that the whole bull market is not over. So don't be too much in fear. Uh, I doubt that uh, we will really crash to a new low or something. We will probably correct a bit longer. Many people have been predicting that we move sideways for quite a while. Let's see what happens. I personally will hold my coins and I believe that we will see a very, very great market development during this year. I wish you all the best and we see her again on my channel very soon. Your Alex.